But look, you don't need to agree with his opinions. It's a free country. You have the right to talk back to him or anybody else. But when you try to stifle scientific progress because you hate a candidate, you're not the good guys. Maybe it should be you that we're launching into space. That was exactly the sharp response Fox News host Greg Gutfeld gave to California officials for rejecting Elon Musk's SpaceX launch from Vandenberg. And I believe it should also be given to the Space Force for their unwise actions in protecting their contractor, SpaceX. Find out everything in today's TechMap episode. Staying in America, while NASA accelerates its space exploration activities, most notably the $5 billion Europa Clipper mission on SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket that launched on October 14th, SpaceX is also not less insane. Elon Musk's rocket company is literally going to transform space travel over the October 13th weekend. He launched the largest and most powerful rocket in history, which is twice the size of the shuttle and can carry three times the payload. However, doing lift off the mega rocket is what SpaceX has done in previous test flights. And what makes this test flight so special is the breaking of human limitations in space flight. Yeah, a 71 meter tall super heavy booster then could land right where they took off from. Everything was completed with absolute accuracy. This is exactly extraordinary feat never done before. This achievement has marked a big bang in human space exploration. Even a major national agency like NASA, with 66 years of operation, seems to have never dreamed of it. Yes, testing such technologies is too risky and expensive for NASA, especially since they are struggling with the budget cut from Congress, bureaucracy, and the persistent consequences of cost-plus contracts. It's safe to say that no government could pull it off, but the California Coastal Commission a state agency within the California Natural Resources Agency is putting hurdles to more expansion of SpaceX over naked political reasons. As a matter of course, SpaceX, on October 15th, filed a suit against the California Coastal Commission over egregiously and unlawfully overreaching its authority and engaging in naked political discrimination. The tension stems from plans by SpaceX to launch 50 rockets per year from Vandenberg Space Force Base next year that have been nixed by the state's Coastal Commission. To carry out the plan smoothly, SpaceX is asking for an order that would declare the SpaceX Falcon 9 launch program federal agency activity. That means the state agency could not regulate it through its permit process. Instead, the commission must reach an agreement with the military, known as a federal consistency plan, to regulate the impacts of rocket launches on the coast and wildlife. In response, commissioners argued that SpaceX was primarily a private company and should therefore obtain a permit itself, which is called Coastal Development Permit, or CDP. Their given reason is that 80% to 87% of SpaceX's rocket launches are not carrying U.S. government payloads, but satellites for one of Musk's other private companies, Starlink. But in fact, according to the analysis from Alex, a physics engineer who keeps up with SpaceX news, SpaceX doesn't need to apply for a CDP because the U.S. Space Force has rightfully declared that the increase of SpaceX launches from Vandenberg is a federal matter of national security. Now, the Commission realizes that if it votes in favor of the consistency certification of the U.S. Space Force, it would be impossible to then find a plausible environmental reason to deny SpaceX a CDP that's based on the exact same parameters as the U.S. Space Force's consistency certification. Therefore, they have already made up their mind that they would reject the consistency certification of the U.S. Space Force then forcing SpaceX to come before the commission to apply for CDP and finally denying them. Oh my God, this is exactly a classic example of red tape in government, isn't this? That is exactly the problem. The Biden-Harris administration absolutely could override the California Coastal Commission, but they are doing everything they can to damage SpaceX. Elon Musk replied angrily to Alex's post. This is why SpaceX has filed a federal lawsuit against the commission to seek an order that would bar the commission from regulating its rocket launch program at Vandenberg, Alex said. So do you agree that this is exactly the political bias of California officials? Please comment yes if you agree. And guess who has endorsed the California officials? U.S. Space Force initially showed toughness against the commission's unreasonable demands regarding environmental safeguards and monitoring at Vandenberg for the increased number of SpaceX launches. Ridiculously, they have recently seemed to reverse their stance 
agreeing to all commission requests to increase monitoring and to set up an interagency working group that includes U.S. Fish and Wildlife, the National Marine Fisheries Service, and the Federal Aviation Administration to address concerns as the number of launches increases. Of course, we have no idea what led the plot twist from the Space Force, but we acknowledge that that would pave the way for further action by the Commission against Elon Musk and SpaceX. And faced with this act of putting a knife to its neck, SpaceX was forced to act to save itself. Obviously, this would also be a self-inflicted stab-in-the-neck action of the Space Force. Bear in mind that SpaceX is exactly one of the most important contractors at Vandenberg Space Force, and even for the military programs in general. If SpaceX gets delayed, the national critical missions to get grounded. SpaceX's key role in this location is characterized by several significant military contracts, such as a $150 million contract to launch Space Development Agency satellites or launches under the National Security Space Launch NSSL, Phase 2 program and to keep up with a surge in demand for launches under NSSL-2. In July, the U.S. Space Force increased its contract with SpaceX by $661 million, bringing the total value to approximately $4 billion. In the future, the Space Force will buy more Falcon Heavy launches from SpaceX. In the eyes of the military and the U.S. government's spy satellite agency, the Falcon Heavy, alongside ULA's Vulcan, is a replacement for the retired Delta IV heavy rocket, which has conducted top-secret surveillance missions into religious orbit for more than two decades. For a long time, the masculine rocket has become the favorite choice for military missions. The Falcon Heavy is one of the most powerful operational rockets, capable of lifting large payloads into various orbits. This capability is crucial for military missions that often require deploying multiple satellites or large spacecraft simultaneously. For example, the USS F-67 mission successfully launched a military communications satellite along with five smaller payloads, demonstrating its capacity to handle complex missions. With a base launch cost of just $90 million, Falcon Heavy can launch that cargo for just a fraction of the price. United Launch Alliance charges for the service. Atlas V starts at $109 million, whereas the company's other type of rocket, the Delta IV Heavy, costs upwards of $350 million a launch, limiting its use to government customers. Even ULA's low-cost Vulcan Centaur has a price tag of around $100 or $200 million. The low cost stems from the reusability of first-stage boosters, which can return to Earth and be refurbished for future launches. This reusability not only reduces costs, but also increases the frequency of available launches allowing for rapid deployment of military assets as needed. Last but not least, the Falcon Heavy incorporates advanced technology that can support various military applications, including experimental missions like those conducted by the X-37B space plane. These missions often involve testing new technologies and conducting research that contributes to national defense capabilities. In the satellite field, SpaceX also demonstrates its big contribution to security missions by providing and funding Starlink services to Ukraine largely on its own. It's where Starlink demonstrated it could operate in a combat zone and proved to be more resilient than the U.S. military would have expected from a commercial system. However, for Elon Musk, Starlink needs to be a civilian network, not a participant in combat. That's where a military version of its Starlink satellites called Starshield comes in. Starshield is also capitalizing on SpaceX's participation in the U.S. Space Force's Space Development Agency's Missile Tracking and Missile Detection Constellation, where it partnered with LIDOS to develop four classified infrared sensor satellites scheduled to launch before the end of the year. When mentioning the cooperation between SpaceX and the Pentagon, can't help but mention the intention of the U.S. Department of Defense to inquire about using Starship on its own, flying the massive rocket as a government-owned, government-operated asset on sensitive, and potentially dangerous missions. Currently, the DoD contracts SpaceX as a launch services provider. In this new proposed arrangement, the Pentagon would actually take control of the vehicle on its own. This promises a future where the military's power will be enhanced multiple times once this gigantic vehicle comes to life and they can explore all of its functions.
Obviously, to get there, SpaceX needs to have sustainable financial resources to pay the expensive bill for the Starship's development. One of the best ways to earn enough money is through lucrative government contracts using Falcon Heavy rockets and launching Starlink. Those who oppose Elon Musk understand exactly that, including California officials, and this leads to their current actions. It has no doubt that the Pentagon does not want any political movements to impact its strategies. So once again, its actions this time must be more clever than ever. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.